Well, hey folks, my name is Josh Johnson, just here to give you a little uh, angling buzz update. I'm out here currently on the west end of Sakakawea, and uh, you know, overall, it might sound a little dumb, but when the fish want to bite, the bite has been really good. Um, tricky part is they're pretty stuffed, so timing, um, you know, and when they open their mouth is up to them. Uh, throughout the, oh, there we go, I got them on the dead stick. Got them. So, right now, the timing that seems to be working is after dark. Uh, you know, there was a little bit of a low light bite. Um, you know, and uh, simmered down right at dark. And then now after dark, honestly, I think they're firing back up again. Um, but honestly, like, day to day the windows of when they want to bite <laughs> can change a lot the bite is in their hands they're pretty sturdy sturdy fish they're uh pretty packed out with food um the far west end of the lake like from williston to the newtown region a lot of these fish are actually feeding on a lot of white bass and emerald shiners um and in this cold water there's a good mix of like smelt cisco everything else coming through the system as well on this far west end um this would be a nice nice eater size size of fish but i'm gonna let her go for now if you enough fish so um if you're fishing extremely far west like lewis and clark region uh lund's landing tobacco gardens beaver bay a lot of what you're looking to fish is just the base of the channel drops um you know, depending on where you're at, the base of that channel might be 15 foot, might be 10 foot, or might be 20 or 25 foot. Um, that's a good go-to starting spot. Really, the best tool you can use to, like, you know, find where you want to fish is just pulling out your Lake Master mapping, taking a look at the contours, and going from there. Um, you know, to find a starting spot, all you're really looking for is something different. You might have junctions of two channels coming together. You might have a spot where the channel swings up really tight to the bank. Um... You also might have it where it swings up by the bank and it's a really sharp break line for a long time and then it starts to flatten out. That transition can be a really good spot. Additionally, look on the bank and just use your eyes visually for changes in composition. Maybe it's sandy for a half a mile and all of a sudden you get a big rock pile. It might be a good area to check out. Maybe you have a coulee, maybe you have like a little ephemeral stream that comes in, maybe it's the mouth of a bay. Those can all be good key starting spots. You know, try to find something that's just a little different to put the odds in your favor. Um, once you progress further east, like let's just say White Earth, Newtown region, uh, the base of the break, you know, is gonna start getting to be, you know, 40 or 60 foot of water. Um, you know, so I'm not fishing the bases of the breaks out there. I'm starting to get on structure. You know, 20 to 25 foot, maybe 30 foot is still a good key, key depth range. Now, as you progress down the lake, like especially once you get past the Newtown Bridge, it really starts turning into more a smelt country kind of kind of thing. Uh, that's where you really start getting large bands of smelt. I'm talking the majority of the prominent structures that jut out into the main river channel are going to have smelt adjacent to them, and many of those are going to have walleye on them. Um, what I like to do is actually like let's just say you have a point mine that you want to fish. I'll drill out adjacent to that point in like 60 or 80 foot of water and confirm that there is a bunch of smelt out there and see the highest point in the water column that that band of smelt will come up to so let's just say you're in 60 foot of water or maybe 40 or 50 foot of water and the top of that band of smelt comes up to about 28 foot of water well i'll actually fish 28 foot of water on the point that's adjacent to those smelt it seems like that you know that upper level of the smelt you know, it's kind of where the wall I like to line up on structure. Generally speaking, I'm sure the wall I do lots of like chasing down bait over suspended, you know, deep water type situations. But day in, day out, I think most of their feeding is on structure because they like to, you know, use the structure of their advantage when it comes to feeding on, on the smelt. Um, usually that smelt bite is definitely a low light thing. First thing in the morning and, you know, sunset is going to be your key times it can be a fairly brief window but it can be fire if, if you're on the right spot so yeah i mean uh 
the the fishing is fantastic when they want to eat they're so stuffed um there is times where you can see 30 fish in a row and they they don't hardly act like you're there um timing is a big thing like i said in small country first thing in the morning last thing in the afternoon is, is pretty key closer to williston it's a lot more hit and miss it could be a you know after dark bite it could be a morning thing could be a late afternoon thing um, sometimes what worked yesterday may not work the next day so sometimes you just kind of have to accept those results once in a while but you know be happy when it does really pan out for you so anyways that's that i'm gonna run for it here good luck out there Do you think it's a pike or a walleye? What do you think it is? A pike. That one's really pulling, bud. That's really pulling. Pull the rod up a little higher, bud. Just lift up, get away from the hole a little bit. There you go. Jay, you're doing awesome. Dad, it's big. Guys, I need some a little help here. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of help here, okay, bud? Dad, it's so. Oh, dude, they're, they're on it. Did you? I, I dropped down and oh, no. just like right on it. <laughs> Good job, bud. Jay! Oh, oh, wow. Look at it's the, a pike! It's a walleye pike, I guess, if you want to call it that. This is a big one. Get on, hook him. biggest catch today. That's Good a... job, bud. He just saved it. Yeah, Jay, sit, sit on the cooler and I'll put this one on your lap. What? Oh, I'm cooler. Is he going to get jacked? I don't know. Here you go, bud. Dad. Just kind of put your put two hands out. It looks like he ate a stick. Did you want to grab this, it with one hand or two? Poop? Oh my gosh, I got one here. What? Yeah. Got him. Oh, I missed him. Poop. Is this poop? Yeah. They, they're everywhere. Yeah. What's this? I don't know. Pay attention though. Jay, the bud. fish are everywhere, son. Hey, Jake. Jake. They, they're all over the screen right now. Look at them all. <laughs> they're trying to hammer my big and wrap. <laughs> I don't know if they're Cisco or Walleye. Oh, you oh, got one, Dad. <laughs> Dad, what's this stuck on my snowball? Got him. I, it might be fish, fish poop. <laughs> it's not a big deal. I was trying to video the other one. I just got another one. There we go. Jay, Jay, they're everywhere. Yeah, that's 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 a lot like what we were.